All right, hey guys, uh, this is the second part of the audio device series I'm going to be doing. Uh, the original video I did three different com uh, three different audio devices, which kind of became time consuming. I mean, the video was 30 minutes. I think it was too long. So I'm just going to start breaking these down into individual components. It's going to take a lot longer, I guess, to get through, but um, you know, maybe it'll just work better this way. Uh, so the second video we're going to do is going to be on the utility plugin. I know it doesn't seem like much, but it's a pretty big part of your workflow, and I think it's overlooked. And you can also use it for creative purposes, um, so, so which I'll show you later when I get to certain sections that like what I've used it for. So to get started, you have the two top buttons, which is the mute button, which is pretty self-explanatory. It's going to turn down. It's just going to mute the sound which you could probably use in live performance or you can automate it in your track rather than having to use the on off switch on the channel strip or using the fader. Um, the DC button, basically what it goes in is like a high pass filter and it's going to cut out all like the low on audible frequencies which can clear up energy in your track. Um, so that's what that switch does. The gain control is again self-explanatory it's going to turn up and down the gain but what's handy with this is especially with mixing later if you automate your channel fader and you want to adjust the levels later you're not going to be able to you're going to have to adjust all the automation so what a lot of people do is they use the gain knob to do automation and then they can mix later with the channel fader and it's freed up or you could do it vice versa you can automate with the channel fader and then use the gain tool later to bring the levels up and down to where you want them to so this next section basically can split up this the signal. It, it defaults to stereo, which is going to be your, both your left and your right. Um, you can just you can play that, or you could just play only the left side if you wanted to, and it will center it. Or your right, or you can swap the left and the right. Now it doesn't seem like much, but what I do a lot of times is I put a lot of weird effects and stuff onto sounds to get some interesting stuff coming out. Um, and I'll usually do like a full wet signal. And sometimes, depending on the plugin you use, they'll have different things going on on different sides. So sometimes I only like the left side, or sometimes I only like the right side of what's coming out of the affected signal. So what I've gone in and used is the utility plugin, and maybe I just like the left side. So when you get the left side playing, it's just going to kind of come through on both sides and, and on the left and the right channel. And you can bounce that down. You can usually what I do is try to convert it into audio, and then once you have that, you can kind of work with it more, and then put on like stereo imaging plugins, and you'll have you can kind of create a stereo image again because it gets a little flat when you only hear the left side. It's like almost pretty much a mono signal. It, it is a mono signal of the left side essentially. So that's what this section is, and again, like it seems simple, but you'll use it for creative purposes eventually. Um, the next section below is the pan. Or the pan. Uh, again, you have it on each channel, but you also have it on the utility. Um, sometimes when you do pan stuff with effects on this channel and you go back and then re-pan again uh, on the utility, you can kind of get some interesting sounds. So, but normally, you know, just left and right pan or center is zero. Um, the last, or second to last, is going to be the width. Uh, basically, 100% is going to be your stereo signal, and it's going to be your mid and your sides. Um, if you go down to zero, it's just going to be a mo it's going to turn the signal into a mono signal. So basically, a mono signal is whatever is the same on both the left and the right is considered mono, and then what's considered side is anything that is differentiated between the left and the right. So if you go up to two hundred percent, you're only going to hear the sides then. So this plugin can be handy for creating width. Um, it can also be used for, you know, processing signals differently, um, the sides versus the, like the middle. Um, you just kind of have to get creative with it. Um, and then we're going to go into the last two, which are a pretty simple. A lot of times you'll find these on, you know, they'll be on mixing boards, but they're just basically phase buttons, um, which you can do separately the left from the right, which basically you might need to reverse the phase of a sound that if you recorded in and you had multiple mics on it, sometimes there'll be phasing issues that'll cancel out the sound. So by reversing the phase, you'll be able to create the punch or whatever the impact the sound originally had when it was being recorded. So that's basically it for the utility plugin. Again, it's a really simple plugin, but there's a lot of stuff. It'll become a big part of your workflow if you're new to this. I, it, 
especially with the gain, like I said, when you get, start getting creative using the different stereo signals or swapping it, etc. So I hope this video helped. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, uh, feel free to leave them below. And then uh, I'll start working on the next video for next week. And I hope you guys enjoy. All right, bye.